If you're a newly licensed life insurance agent watching this video and you're in that like absorbing information mode to make sure that your very first move is gonna be a positive and profitable move, then this video is absolutely for you. Today I'll be going over a lot of information including whether you should pick up a niche product to start with or just a bunch of different products. Should you go independent right from the start or maybe are you better off going captive first and then making the move to being independent later? I mean, it took me about five years before I made the move, so it's up to you. What your first 30 days of license should look like and what your like, I wanna say second and third month should look like too. And guys, the best way to start is to give this video a thumbs up and we suggest subscribing if you're a new viewer. We're putting out life insurance sales content and final expense sales training videos just like this all the time. Should you start by selling multiple products or not? Look guys, if you wanna have a higher chance of quicker success, you should definitely 100% pick a niche market to target. You've got the term life and mortgage protection markets, annuities, and my specialty, final expense. And guys, I started out with mortgage protection sales, mastered that as a top producer, then when the industry started getting more and more saturated, and we're talking over 10 years ago, you know, and, and I just started struggling to get leads, I ended up working the final expense market. Annuities are the toughest sale for me, my opinion, of all the life insurance products. So. I never did specifically target that. It was just too easy to get final expense leads compared to annuity leads, so I didn't really mess with that market. Oh, and guys, if you'd like a copy of the policy summary and the memorial planning guide that you can use with all of your life insurance presentations and clients, just stick around to the end of the video and I'm gonna show you how to get both of these for yourself. The one thing that I immediately noticed about the final expense market is that the clients are mainly seniors who definitely have a need for the insurance that is and guys therefore ended up being like to me the easiest market that I've ever sold to it, it really has you know and keep in mind that you know I've got a background of sales long before insurance I was a home improvement salesman for right around 10 years before I even considered life insurance sales and, and was actually recruited uh, as a Hartford mortgage protection agent so again I was already a talented you know closer at the the one call close so let's say you found your niche. You know exactly what market and industry you're going to start in. The biggest fail is when agents try to do it on their own. And my suggestion is to find an agency that specializes in your niche and start there. And guys, keep in mind that without a base salary, if you start off as an independent agent and you have to pay for leads, you're most likely not going to get very good training. I mean, think about it you're independent, how does the training make sense for someone who's independent? This is why you might be better off finding a captive agency that will pay a base salary. And yes, these places are really hard to find. And if you're not like completely impressive, you probably don't have a shot at getting hired in these places. And or if you don't pick up their system real quick and, and aren't closing sales like better than most, you're probably just gonna be asked to leave anyways. A second option is to find an agency that will pay for everything so at least you're not out of pocket you know meanwhile you get paid commission only okay keep that in mind that's the way it's going to be in most places there are a lot of agencies that do this we're doing it so agents you know basically who find me have find our agencies do have both options they can you know come in as a full-blown independent agent and get 100 110 percent first year commissions like right from the start while having access to like 20 appointments on their calendar every day or they can go to the subsidized appointments platform and get intensive training while we pay for everything like no fees remember guys over 95 percent of new insurance agents either completely fail or they just end up jumping around from agency to agency thinking in their mind god the problem that i'm having is the leads and so they don't realize that they've just never been trained properly or they simply don't have the right work ethic and that that's pretty 
pretty common. You know, it, it takes hard work if you're going to be independent. Let's talk about the time frame. While you're in process of getting your license, you should be doing like a lot of research to find that niche and the right agency and starting point. The key I think is to like ask them exactly what your first 30 days is going to look like. And to me, it should look something like this. Today, you got approved and you just got your license. So you're in day one. You're going to get your e &O insurance. You're going to do your anti-money laundering training, then do your contract. And a lot of times you can, you can get that on Sure LC. You can do all that right there when you do the contracting. Most agencies are going to teach you that it's better to have like a handful of carriers and products and not like, you know, 15 products at once. Also, before you start getting carrier approvals, you need to start your training and learning the presentation script. If you're doing face-to-face, you've got to memorize the script and when you make a presentation, you have to sound like you've been doing this for a while and are like a total pro. For teleagents, you actually have to work harder and put in lots of hours every single day, just like on that script. Like, you know, even though you don't have to memorize it, you, you pretty much have to. You got to know it up and down. And with telesales, remember guys, your voice and your tonality is going to make or break you. It, it really is. It, that's what's going to be the difference, you know, for, for you. And to me, you need to make sure that you've got the script down real tight. And when you, you know, make those first presentations, you sound super smooth, professional. You're both competent and capable of not only the entire process, but having the process sound like this is what you've been doing for years. The first 30 days, if you're doing it right, you're busting your butt to be prepared and are most likely working like harder than you've ever worked in your life. Preparation is important, but let me just backstep really quick and emphasize two important things. One, you'll never be totally prepared and you're gonna have to accept the fact that you'll be learning some things once you get on the phone or in the field throughout you know, your first, I wanna say, week while you're doing the activities. And two, at some point, you just have to start. You can't overthink it. You can't allow the old paralysis by analysis to happen, which I hate to say, I see it more than I'd like. And this is where the agent overthinks and is so concerned with being ready that they take way too long to prepare themselves. And then when they do finally get into the field or on the phone, they're just God awful. Again, don't overthink it. At some point, you just need to start doing the activities and accept that the learning curve starts when you actually start doing the work. About your second month at my agency, we want you on the phone and making presentations literally by the end of the first month, you know, by the third or fourth week. You definitely need to be cutting through the learning curve by week five, I wanna say, and through that entire second month. And unfortunately, here's where most independent agents fail because they don't have great training and they're struggling, you know, through the, the whole learning curve. And if they're not selling, and they're spending money on their leads because they're independent, they're not gonna keep buying leads. They're just gonna give up at some point. To me, day 31 through day 60, known as your first month of selling, is crucial to your success. If you don't have the right amount of money set aside for your independent insurance business, we're talking at least, honest to God guys, at least three to $5,000, then you're most likely gonna run out of money before you even get through the learning curve. And this is why most people should probably start and work a no cost leads and or subsidized leads platform, you know, when they're new. I mean, the last thing that I'm gonna do is give an agent access to the minimum and or the most basic training and then buy their leads for them. Well, you know, look, we know this combination doesn't work, which is why we put the extra work and the hand holding and the training and on our agents that are on the free leads and appointments platform. By your third month, or your second month selling, so we're talking like day 61 through 90, the process should be getting comfortable. You should have a good idea if you're in the right business or not, and this is when you should be completely consistent and repetitive. And like, I wanna say in all aspects of the life insurance and or final expense sales business. If you're independent, you should be on a fixed amount of leads, 
and be committed to that same exact amount of leads every single week. To me, that's crucial for success in our industry. The agents who buy leads here and there and aren't really committed to like a weekly exclusive amount of leads are the same exact agents that I see jumping around from one agency to another, to another, to another. Like they're always hoping to find some easier way or some magic lead where the client just hands you the check. No guys, it doesn't work that way. There is no easier way. If you're not doing the same activities day after day, week after week in a very consistent and professional manner, I hate to say it, you're, you're probably in the wrong industry. You're, you're probably on your way out anyways. One last thing guys, by the time you're in that, I wanna say like, you know, third month, you know, days 61 through 90, the skill set should start to kick in. The talent should like start to show itself. You're overcoming basic objections. Your closing percentage is making sense, right? It's, it's not, it's not bad, but it's definitely you know, better. Your clients aren't giving you like as many excuses as they were like in your first month. And therefore you're helping more people and are pretty much on your way to a successful career at life insurance and or final expense sales. For a copy of the policy summary and the memorial planning guide that I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the video, just email me at Doug at UFES online.com for more information on our preset appointments, final expense sales platforms. Just shoot me an email at that same address. As always, when you put the needs of your clients first, everything else will usually fall right into place. Now get out there and whatever you do, make sure that you do something good for someone else today. Happy hunting.